Welcome to Chopstick Travel. I'm Luke Martin, and this is our third episode of our Street Food Around the World in Taiwan series. This time, we are taking you on a Korean food tour of Taipei. They say that culture is Korea's biggest export, and with it comes its cuisine. So authentic Korean food can be found around the world, and Taiwan is no exception. So in this episode, we're gonna be snacking on some Korean street foods, showing you the influence that Korea has on Taiwan, and finishing the day with an authentic Korean barbecue. It's gonna be a great episode, so make sure you stay tuned until the end. Let's go to our first spot. We are at our first stop. This place is just a tiny little place that only has a small menu serving mainly kimbap, which is Korean snack street food that is uh, rolled rice inside of some seaweed. We ordered one with pork and spam, and then we also ordered one with beef. And it's just cool little counter seating here, very small shop. And I also have one little drink to try while we wait for the food. It's called Sike, and it's a Korean rice drink. So it's actually got the rice husks inside. Let's try it. Oh, wow. Yeah, you can actually feel the little pieces of rice floating around there, and it's very sweet. It's almost like a dessert. Mm. So we have our gimbap. This is the beef version. It is huge and very artfully presented. So let me check out what we got going on inside of here. I can see there's a little bit of beef there. There's an omelet, some uh, julienne cucumbers, some julienne uh, carrot. It looks like a pickled radish as well, maybe some other pickles, and then topped with a little bit of sesame seeds, and it's wrapped all up in rice and seaweed. And these are perfect one-biters. I love the beef in there, it's like a bulgogi, it's got a sweetness to it. And then all the contrasting different textures, you get the soft rice, but the kind of crunchy, crisp seaweed on the outside, all those fresh veggies inside too. And I gotta try this one too, which is really interesting. It's the Spam with a little bit of pork. All the other ingredients are the same. And this is, Spam is really popular in Korea. And that looks awesome, so beautiful. That one's got a little bit of a spiciness to it, but definitely not overly spicy at all. It's just a subtle hint from that pork, and that, that spam is nice and salty. The thing that I really like about these is how packed full of ingredients are, they are, and they also feel really healthy. Mm. What one do you prefer, spam or beef? I like the beef one. The mm. beef is really sweet, very bulgogi-esque. Honestly, I like the spam because it's got a little bit of a spiciness. <laughs> They're big. So it wouldn't be a true Korean meal without some kimchi. So the owners actually just brought us some, and this is gonna be the true test if their food is really good, if the kimchi is good. Oh yeah. Oh man, that's just how I like it. Oftentimes in Taiwan, you get it and it's really sweet. This is spicy and sour, exactly how it's supposed to be. Oh, that's so good. Almost like a little bit cheesy. Mm. All right, so that restaurant was very authentic. The food was spot on. And even in the back, they had posters of K-pop stars, BTS, Blackpink, all in the very back. But we know a better place if you want to go and get K-pop merchandise. We're gonna head to it right now. So this is Idol King here in Ximen Shopping Street and it is full of posters, stickers, pins, bags, pillows, you name it. It has your idol's face on it, a K-pop star. So I saw a ton of BTS, a ton of Blackpink, a couple other bands I'm actually not familiar with but I'm sure some of you guys would recognize them. Luke refused to come in here with me. How was it? 
It was great. Yeah, so I you want to come in? <laughs> Next time, maybe. <laughs> so besides just getting memorabilia of your favorite Korean K-pop band, you can actually go and see some Taiwanese K-pop bands. We got a little bit of a tip, and there's apparently a show going on today. So we're gonna go over and check that out. Don't really know what to expect, but let's go. <laughs> You can see that the Korean influence is apparent in the way that they are dancing and rest assured they were dancing to all your favorite Korean K-pop bands, although I couldn't use the copyrighted music. That was quite interesting. We'll say they were a little bit young yeah. and some of those uh, outfits were a little short. Yep, to each their own. I guess that's the K-pop influence. But now we've come to Sulin Night Market to have a popular Korean street food. The Silla Night Market is the largest night market here in Taipei and it's home to a lot of international cuisines and there's this one little stall called Korea Uncle that is serving two typical Korean street foods. One is the tteokbokki, the spicy rice cakes, and the other is oding, which is the fish paste cake served with broth. These can be found on the streets of Korea just about anywhere. We've ordered up both, but I gotta start first with the tteokbokki, so you can see these beautiful little rice cakes here swimming in that red uh, sauce, which has gochujang, which is that Korean red pepper sauce. And she actually mixed in cheese with this one. So she mixed in the cheese, melted it on the frying pan, and you get this final product with this gooey cheese and that rice cake. And hopefully it'll be spicy, because it's supposed to be. Mm, it's definitely got a little bit of a kick, but it's a little bit toned down, I think, for the Taiwanese palate. You get that really chewy, kind of bouncy texture from the rice cake, and then it's smothered in that sauce, which is a little bit sweet and a little bit spicy. And then you've got, of course, all that cheese. Just look at that. That is some seriously melty cheese, processed cheese, I will add, but not too bad for a little street side snack. So I'm trying the odang, the Korean fish cake. It's been placed on a skewer. And when she was cooking this up, she placed a little bit of soy sauce on top and then also added a little bit of fish broth. So I'm gonna be trying all of that, but first, the odang. Mmm, mmm, so chewy. Nice and fresh, not too fishy, very nice. So she's actually added a little bit of extra broth that those odin are simmering away in and I really want to give it a try. So I'm gonna try to do this really carefully. Mm. Wow, that's actually a nice fish cake flavor. It's really salty though and this dish is actually very popular to have in winter which kind of contrasts the hot and the humidity of Taipei. Pretty good tteokbokki and odang. I'd say the flavors were almost authentic, but I would have liked it even a little bit more spicy. Got myself a watermelon juice, not particularly Korean by any means, but we're heading to the train station to go to our next spot for some Korean fried chicken.
This is Cheogajip. It's a famous Korean fried chicken chain, and we are going to get some beer and famous KFC or Korean fried chicken, world famous chicken. I am super excited. There's a little bit of a line, so let's wait and then go inside and try out Cheogajip. After about an hour wait, we are inside. It's packed out Thursday night, super loud. Everyone's enjoying their Korean fried chicken. We have the menu right here, and we're gonna go for their signature young yum, and we're gonna get the spicy version. And of course, we're going to have it with beer. The Koreans call it chi mek, chicken and beer. And you actually just gotta press the button. It's underneath the table, and then the, the waitress will come. We have Korea's number one beer brand, Kas, and I'm gonna pour myself a glass, and I know what you're thinking. In Korea, you're not supposed to pour yourself beer or anything really, but we're not in Korea, we're in Taiwan. So we can enjoy it any way we want, even if I want to have it with way too many bubbles. I can. Oh, that was just all bubbles. <laughs> Our chicken has arrived. This is a spicy young yum chicken. We ordered boneless and it is just glistening. They really cover it in that sauce. And I hope this is gonna be nice and spicy. And we've got on the side some pickled radish to kind of help cut the oily greasiness of the chicken. And then of course my beer. And of course you gotta have the plastic glove, which is perfect for eating chicken. You can just go right in. Oh, I gotta go for a nice piece with all kinds of that sauce. Oh, it's nice and hot. My mouth is watering. Let's try. Oh wow. Mm. oh, wow. It is definitely spicy. And I can taste a little bit of a honey glaze, actually. And it is ridiculously juicy. Look at that dark meat on the inside. Just full of juice. Wow, that sauce is powerful. It's actually got quite a big kick to it. I love it. Oh, no. That is awesome. All right, let's go in for a bite. Mm. Oh wow, that is good. I'm gonna wash it down with one of these side dishes. The radish here should be nice and cold. Mm. I love those pickled, but a little bit sweet. And of course, gotta wash it down with some beer. That's how you do it in Korea. Surprisingly, the chicken actually retains its crispiness despite being completely smothered in the sauce. I would say the sauce is a little bit overpowering and a little bit too sweet for my liking, but still really good fried chicken. Mm, really juicy. Chi Mac beer and fried chicken, definitely a marriage made in heaven. But I would say it's definitely not the best fried chicken I've ever had. Comment down below and let us know what your favorite fried chicken is. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but we're gonna go eat a Korean barbecue. Oh, no. <laughs> we're so stuffed after that. <laughs> so let's go get some Korean barbecue. Korean barbecue place. It's about 10 p.m. on a Thursday and there is a line. This place is no reservations and the cool thing about this place is it's standing only. So we're gonna tell you a little bit more about it inside. the rowdiest place we've ever filmed at. It is uh, drunk o'clock here in Taipei, and this is the place to be. Luckily, we got a table, it was a little bit of a wait. This place is super cool. They actually come and kind of cook it at your table for you, and as I mentioned, it's standing only. So we ordered two different cuts. One is the beef steak, 
and then the other is the pork belly. He actually chopped the pork belly up and then mixed it with the kimchi. And uh, he kind of does it all for you, so you don't really need to worry about cooking it yourself. All the side dishes are self-service, so you can just grab whatever you want. I'm sorry if you can't hear me right now, but uh, let me introduce our food. So the first one is the steak. And I think I'm gonna try this first. I'm gonna go for a dip in this sauce here. I see lots of green onions, sesame seeds. Looks like a little bit of a soy. Let's try that. Oh, really sweet, but really tender and juicy. That's good. I'm trying to get on everyone else's level here. So we've got some soju. We actually got the pineapple flavored soju. Uh, Sabrina doesn't like the original kind. And this is like the cheapest Korean liquor that is found everywhere in Korea. It is just famous there. Let me give it a try. And by try, I mean the whole thing. Wow, the pineapple goes down smooth. That is good, not too strong. So we've got some lettuce here and I'm gonna make a, a wrap. So I'm gonna grab some of these pieces of pork belly that are still sizzling away on our grill here. Some of the kimchi and then maybe a little bit of this gochujang sauce. Just put a little bit of that on there and then you can kind of wrap it up but you just want to basically get it in your mouth. Oh, that's good. So this is such a cool restaurant. The atmosphere is insane. Standing up is a really unique experience. Luke and I are just going to enjoy the food and the experience all together. Cheers. There are flames just going up everywhere in here. It smells like pork and beef and it's just delicious food. I'd really say that this is probably the rowdiest place we've ever filmed at. Definitely the rowdiest place we've ever filmed at, but probably the craziest place we've ever been to in Taipei. It is just a party in here. Maybe we caught it on a special night or something, but I really like the concept of standing only. It basically limits you to, as soon as your legs are tired, you have to leave, or you're too drunk to stand, you basically need to leave too. But a lot of fun. What do you think, Sabrina? Awesome place, love the atmosphere the most. What an incredible day of eating Korean food here in Taipei. And that was the perfect way to end the day with the Korean barbecue. Another great episode of street food around the world here in Taipei. If you're not subscribed already, make sure you do and hit the bell icon so you're notified. What do you think the best thing we ate today was, Sabrina? Kimbap, hands down. That was so good, so delicious, very authentic. Yeah, I'd have to say that was the most authentic Korean flavor that I tasted all day and I'd agree that was the best thing we yeah. had today. If you guys would like to become a Patreon, uh, hit the link down in the description box. You get access to our monthly blooper reels and also our personally curated food maps. So consider becoming a Patreon. It helps us out a lot and we would really appreciate it. And we'll see you on another episode of Street Food Around the World in Taiwan soon. Bye-bye.